Hi, this is Josh of Leadworks Software, and today we're going to be talking about rendering lights in Leadworks Engine. We start by creating a simple program. Framework just uh, includes the engine module and all the modules it needs. Create a graphics window. I'm going to create kind of a small one. Register the abstract path. And again, what this does is it uh, it allows the engine to load files without knowing exactly where they are so that it can load shaders from zip packages or from subdirectories. And now let's create the world. And I like to do it this way. That just tells us uh, if there was any errors creating the world, uh, we'll get an error message instead of it just crashing. Let's create a camera. And we'll move it backwards a little bit. Let's create a, a uh, visual mesh that we can see. That's a T mesh. Okay. This is the main program loop. And that'll just make the cube spin. And when we say uh, VEC3 and only give it one parameter, that's the same as giving it three parameters that are the same as the first. Okay, so let's see what this does. I'm going to press F5. And there's our spinning cube. Now what we want to do is add lights to this. So, first we're going to create a light ent entity. and We can choose from point, spot, or directional lights, but I'm going to create a spotlight. and that positions it uh, just to our right and a little bit over our shoulder. And we want to rotate it to face the cube. Okay, now when I run this, um, it's still not going to have any lighting apparent and that's because in Leadworks Engine 2.1 we implemented a deferred renderer and it's slightly it takes a little bit more work to set up the rendering but it's not difficult and it's definitely worth it for all the benefits we get with the deferred renderer so what deferred rendering does is instead of calculating lighting every time you're drawing something you draw all your stuff on screen and then it will uh, calculate lighting just on the final screen pixels. So it doesn't matter how many polygons you have on screen, the lighting uh, process will always take the same amount of time. Uh, in our case, it will always be processing 640 times 480 pixels, no matter what's on screen. So the way we do this is we need to create a render buffer. And a render buffer is a set of textures. Um, in our case, we're going to create a color texture, a depth texture, and a normal texture. And while it's rendering objects, it'll render that data to these textures in the render buffer. And then that will be used to draw our final lighting. So let's create a buffer. Use the create buffer command, and we want the dimensions to be the same as the uh, graphics window. 
And now here's where we add the flags that tell the engine what to uh, what components the de the buffer should have. So we'll say buffer color zero, and you can actually have more than one color attachment, but we won't get into that right now. Buffer depth, we definitely want that. And then for deferred lighting, we need to have a normal buffer. And on, I think on shader model 4.0 cards, that will be, uh, I think that'll be a 64-bit buffer. And on, uh, on cards that don't support it, it'll use a 32-bit uh, buffer. But that's not important. Okay. Now let's go down here. Instead of just rendering the world to the back buffer, which is the default buffer, let's get rid of this. And here's what we want to do. First we want to set the buffer to our buffer we created up here. And we do that like this. Set buffer, buffer. That was easy, right? Okay, now we call render world. And instead of drawing to the screen, it's going to draw to this render buffer, to all the textures attached to it. Okay, now lighting is a sort of a post-processing step uh, with the deferred renderer. So we're drawing to those textures and then we're going to draw those textures on screen with a special lighting shader applied. And there's a function that will handle all of this for us so we don't have to worry about drawing each individual light. So first we're going to set the buffer to the back buffer. And the back buffer is the default buffer that the engine uses if nothing is called. When it's um, in our original program, it was rendering to the back buffer. It just We just didn't have to call it. Okay, and now we call the render lights command. And the render lights command needs us to pass our buffer to it because it will look for the um, for the color, depth, and normal textures and it will use that data to draw lighting onto the uh, the current buffer, which in this case is the back buffer. But we could also create a second buffer and use that for adding additional post-processing filters. So let's see, I think that's everything. Let's try it. Okay, we can see there's uh, some lighting appearing here on the cube, but we don't have any shadows because there's not much in this scene. So I'm going to go back and right here, I'll just add in another box. I'll call that the ground. And I want this to be wide and flat, so I'm going to call scale mesh ground. And I'll make that 10, 0 0.1 by 10. Now scale mesh differs from scale entity because scale mesh actually, um, it actually moves the vertices of the mesh. It's not something you want to call in real time but it's handy if you're doing something like this. I could have called scale entity and I don't think it would have made any difference. And I'm going to move it down a little bit so that it's below my original cube. Okay, let's try it now. and we see the cube is casting shadows and it looks pretty nice. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show you and that is the debug lights command. I'll set that to true or one, it doesn't matter which and I'll show you what that does. We can see these guidelines uh, that appear and show us where the light volume is, where the 3D shape is, 
And that's really handy because sometimes it can be hard to figure out which direction your lights are pointing or where they are. So use that to uh, kind of debug your program and figure out what's going on. So we went over how to set up a simple program that uh, just displays one light and you know how to create a render buffer and render lights to it properly with the deferred renderer. So this concludes this video tutorial.